first of all, I think that I would like to ask some members of the cast to join me. There's these nice chairs here, and I feel that it's much nicer and interesting to listen to all of us, uh, even though some must see them like just now. But uh, Agustina Muñoz, <laughs> Keith Paulson, Mati Diop, Dan Salit, Dustin, Guy Defa, I'm forgetting someone. Is that it? Okay. Thank you for, for, for staying. Um, when did you uh, decide to dedicate the film to Setsuko Hara? Uh, pretty late yeah. in the editing process. And it was together with uh, Graham Swan that we somehow decided it. Uh, at first I thought that maybe it could be like um, uh, a little bit like a simple dedication, like a kind of a si simple cinephile tribute. But after thinking of with, with Graham also, uh, we, we thought that it was good, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. Uh, that there was something about it that... About the seasonal transitions. Yes, also about, uh, there was something I enjoy, uh, enjoy of her acting, and, and while I was editing, I also had to write about her once, and I had to see, I, I went back to seeing her films, and there was something about her, her biography, someone that all of a sudden, the peak of her career, like decided to, or, 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 or had this, or someone decided for her, maybe. But, <laughs> but. I think uh, she decided. Yeah, she decided, yeah. yeah. She decided um, to stop that I found uh, interesting, no? someone that decides to stop. And then later, uh, after finishing the, the text, uh, she passed away, and we learned it like five or four months later. There was something about that delay that I thought that was interesting for yeah. something of today. And, uh, and so, yes, I thought that it would be, and then there, unfortunately, too many people passed away that I care for during all this year, and somehow there was something of that, mm -hmm. no? like a private uh, uh, message, in a way. No? Um, and this is a kind of question that's probably come up many times before, but I thought I would bring it up again, which is it, it, tonight, in relation to this film specifically, which is your, Relation to ship to Shakespeare, and, in, and of course, in the case of this particular film, *A Midsummer Night's Dream*, and is that where you started from the text, uh, from the idea of a character who is translating *A Midsummer Night's Dream*? Y usually, I like um, uh, to make one film from the experience of the previous film. So, one film gives the hand to the to the next one, in terms of its economics. In one, on one side, but also in terms of its form. And as I work in, in the previous films around theater, I thought that it was, uh, that, that it was interesting to explore other, other uh, approaches to, to Shakespeare. And in, in Prince of Rand, that was the, the, the last one to this, it was the, radi the radio uh, element that was there part of the plot more. And here, as this was going to be a film shot in two places, in two languages, the idea of, transla of, transla of translation came very easily. No, and uh, so and for me, doing all the Shakespeare films, also I had to deal with that and the words and the subtitles. So for me, the interaction between languages was something very present all the time. So okay, let's put it in the in the center of this film. And also, I was interested in working like with the word and, and in, a, in the word in a, in a little literal way. You know how can cinema deal with words if when they are like literally on the screen like this? Um, that I thought that could push me to making something new because I work with the same crew or with mainly the same crew and, and with Shakespeare and it's myself that it's not that I, I completely change from one film to the other. So I need elements to make me change, to move me somewhere else, to not be that comfortable. Mm -hmm. so, so the idea of translation was like this very original, um, um, a need for change from the origins, no? to make the film different. Um, so I have a general question for the actors before we take questions from the audience, and anyone who wants to jump in, please do. But it's about how Matthias builds his built this film and how he builds his world in, in particular. So anyone who's interested in addressing that or just jumping into the comment, 
I'd love to hear it. Dan. It was actually very fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, when he was working with me, he was definitely um, building a shot at a time, and it was a kind of a construction of the whole shot. It felt very much like the sequence shot was what he was interested in. He would start with us, with the actors. He would talk with us about what we were gonna do. We'd map out a plan. While we were rehearsing, he would go with Fernando, the DP, and they would slowly start setting up a rather complicated shot in most cases, um, with a lot of work for the assistant camera. And uh, the whole thing was built, it, was, it felt like each shot was a separate little movie in, in its way, with a, with a kind of uh, slow, very um, spontaneous buildup. I don't think Matias had planned them completely ahead of time. I think he was finding the shot at the time. He took his time and each one was a separate entity. Good starting point. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, I think uh, Dan owes Augustina a question. I was, I was trying to keep track in the conversation in the film where they were trading questions back and forth, and he said <laughs> that he'd ask two questions and then she could have two, but he only gave her one. So. <laughs> This is your chance. I Dano, Augustino, <laughs> question. <laughs> to answer your question, you mean? I have to ask Dan a question. Oh, I thought Dan owed you a question. Okay. Actually, I don't think it was really 10 when, by the time we all got done, right? I think that Matias cut it up so that the, I didn't count, but I don't think all 10 were there. <laughs> but you enjoy watching yourself today. <laughs> I thought it was going to be painful, and it's not painful, because I know actors sometimes don't like watching themselves, and I didn't mind. It, it doesn't seem like any big deal to me either. It doesn't seem like much of an achievement, but it's like, okay, it's fine. You know? All right. <laughs> um, I was wondering um, how you chose um, to score the film to Scott Joplin. Mm. Um, your previous films, I think, had more like classical um, or like pre um, 20th century stuff. Um, so where did that come from? Yeah, question about how uh, Matthias chose to score the film with Scott Joplin rags, where most of his previous films had pre 20th century stuff. There's some Beethoven in here too, but yeah, it's predominantly Scott Joplin. Um, I used to play the piano and I used to play um, Whipping Willow, that is the song that repeats twice and I, I also, always thought that it should be, this was when I was 15 and I always thought that it should be in a movie so I did a movie. <laughs> uh, um, that first. And then I did it in the moment where I was supposed to be doing like my American film, no? my, my one American <laughs> film. Uh, and so I, I chose I, what I think is the most American music, you know, in a way. Uh, so, so yeah, those, those the, 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 the desire, as when I choose Shakespeare, it's because I, I like it and I enjoy it and there's something that I feel that it connects with me. And with Joplin was the same. Uh, and then I, w I like the idea of changing the way music works in my film in regards to the previous films. That I usually don't have like music like this, no, they usually they're playing it or they're listening to a recording. Here's like, uh, and, and then with also with Graham, at first it was always, uh, I was going to use always the same uh, theme, the, the same song, that it's a sure cane, that it's one that is being played in the piano. Um, because I like how the two hands um, were moving, like that one stays here and the other one goes this way, and I thought that the movie had that structure. No, this would be in Buenos Aires and this would be in New York in a way. <laughs> Uh, but so I like the idea of having a shot of that of the hands, and I didn't, I didn't catch that. So I, when I was shooting that scene, I didn't manage to find to, to, to do that. So you, that's why you don't see the hands. But I actually like that. But then when we were using all the same the same song all the time, it was not really working. And again, and it was Graham who 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 said, oh, maybe it would be interesting to have like a whole like score with with uh, Joplin. And, and that's when I said yes because I wanted to put a, a Whipping Willow that I was leaving behind. No, so I said, of course, and I put Whipping Willow ties. <laughs> uh, and actually it was working better in the moment that, that Sugar King comes in. Uh, it's much better that, that if it was repeated all the time, I don't know. Something was lost because there was a nice effect of like all the time like listening to one, but then I think that we won much, much more. 
It strikes me that a lot of different scenes are in different registers. Yeah. Dustin seems particular yeah. in, a, in a completely different register from. Yeah, I scenes. think that there's like three films in a way. Yeah. Uh, and when you were asking like the experience of acting, I think that I, I don't think if everybody can identify with what uh, Dan said because I think that there were three different films and I think that somehow, or different tones, that somehow they were differently shot. Like in, in Dustin's, it was more schematic, it was this, a little bit more formalistic, it was a little bit more detached. While in, uh, like, while in dance, it was this idea of uh, this dialogue, like sitting down and that I knew that I couldn't over rehearse it in a way, that we needed to go into it. And then the energy between uh, Agustin and Mati also, it was something that was captured there and it's different from, 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 from the energy that should be like with Dustin, that should be something lost. No, there shouldn't be, what I like about that scene is that it's, she goes there in order to look for someone that then when you see them, there's a distance. No, there's something that time went by. No, and so it's, it's there. And then you have Keith like, I, I like how Keith's character like, even though he's not, it's not like I don't usually develop like very conventionally all characters, but somehow you see how the, the, their relationship like grows. Even if it's like one little shot when someone picks him up, picks her up to go to Hudson, you see that okay, maybe they they look like more close. And it's very subtle and it's very small. But again, the film is not only about those relationships, but but the whole range of them. So I do f I, I wanted. I conceive it as a film in, in three chapters, with each chapter being like Buenos Aires, New York, Buenos Aires, New York, Buenos Aires, New York, with a prologue that is Maria, Maria Vichar, the section of New York with Maria, and a last, uh, like a sort of epilogue with, with all the gang without her. No, I, f I feel that the movie, for me, the movie has that structure. Then I like that it's not that clear also. But, but yeah, for me, there, there's like three different like tones. The timing scene? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that I, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> no, because at first I was the same, and I said, oh my God, what is this? And then I think I, I can have an answer. At least I can have an answer. I don't know if it will suit your question, but it will be an answer. Um, I like the idea that they were not, um, you know, that they wouldn't step into each other. And sometimes we go through life and, and, and we have like, um, that, that situations in our life don't contaminate each other. And suddenly you, you, you hang out with a friend and it doesn't connect with how you connect with your brother or how you connect with, with your lover. No? And, those, and I like this idea that instead of being a, all happening at the same time, I like them to be very much autonomous. And that all these things happen in her trip to the US, but they, don't, but they remain as little bubbles that they don't contaminate that much. Only in the end, like uh, Matty appears again, but that's, that's very little also. Um, I like this idea that, and also that they're not variations of a possible journey. Not all things happen, but, but I like, like just a big folk, like a very sharp focus on this, a very sharp focus on that, a very sharp focus on that, instead of like mi mixing all together. You know, um, so, so then it was a kind of a schematic, and I make a little bit fun of it by saying one month before, one, two months before, three months before, you know, to accentuate the, the separation and the bubble aspect of each uh, uh, moment. But for me, the most important thing is that all these things happen to her, but they don't connect between each other. And actually, some, I, something that I somehow like is that she's different in each scene, in each sequence also. No, because we're not the same all the time. No? Uh, it's something that Casabetis said. No? We wear masks, and these masks are changed. So we're not the same people when I'm, I'm with her or when I'm with Keith. I'm not the same. Uh, so I like that idea in, for the film, too. Yes. What was your process of deciding to work with so many friends or people you know? And also, what do you think that gives the film? What, uh, yeah, how did you come to work with so many, of your, so many friends to make the film among friends, really? And what does that give the film? Yeah. Um, that's the way it's always been with you, no? Yeah, it's, it's been always like that. So that's when I moved to the US. 
I didn't think that I could do it. Actually, when I moved out from Buenos Aires, I felt that I was a, less of a filmmaker, that I was abandoning myself as a filmmaker. I was leaving my filmmaker aspect in Buenos Aires because I, I, could not, I couldn't see myself shooting somewhere else. But then time went by, and I made friends, and I met people, and I met uh, people with, I, I felt comfortable and, I, and that I could admire. And I usually work with people that I admire in, in various levels. Uh, and even though with some, I, I don't know them, uh, I, in that moment I didn't know them very, very well, I somehow met them in the street or saw him in, in films or came across in other situations and, and I had this hunch that in this film, more than in that ones, I had many hunches that I think that, that, that he could work. No, I think that she should work. I met, I, I met uh, uh, Mati when she came to show some films in, in, at Art of the Rio and I met her and I knew she was doing the Radcliffe Fellowship and, and I, I, I saw her in other films, but it was more the presence of her with me, and I saw, ah, I think that she can work well with Agustina, because I knew that she, Agustina was going to come here to do the film, and I, and I had that feeling. I, I didn't have the certainty of it, but I had the feeling that, she, that, that there was a continuity, even in, with the differences, and then, we, and then I think that we were lucky that we found each other in a way. Um, so it was after, after a roll of dice, you said? Uh, yes, and um, and I I don't know I I usually do work with people, for instance, in terms of actors that they're actors and they work professionally, but they're also something else. Mm -hmm. you no, know, they're musicians or novelists or or theater directors, and I think that this multiplicity or, uh, of or uh, this multiplicity of disciplines bring in something new, something that I I mean that I found photogenic. No, that they don't do only one thing, that they don't, they're not like specialists like, or professionals in that sense of doing one thing. So I, that's why I think that in the end, I, there's all these people that they, they, they do acting, but they do other things. They, they are musicians, they're, they are uh, filmmakers, they're critics, they're theater directors. And I found that that displacement was something that I also produce an energy in the image that it's similar to the one that I have in Buenos Aires with my actors. So, uh, in the end, I understood why I ended up choosing them. Because many times it was because I was meeting in the street and I saw the possibility and I saw that this energy was possible. Um, it was a little bit uh, without a net, but I'm happy and, and satisfied. It was one of the big challenges of making a film outside your context, no? Uh, and I, I, I was satisfied through going to the experience. Agostino, what's the, what's the, um, the experience of the film f for you? Because you, this is a different context for you. It's a different kind of movie for you and Matthias. I think that also the movie is a lot about the possible lives that we might have yes. and how we can change and what spaces we left empty when we change and also how we can change with others. And um, in that sense, I think that the two parts reflects for me at least a lot about that because I have Buenos Aires people that I know a lot and that I have been working with so the energy that that produce is very particular and we know a lot about each other we know each other working um, and that gives different challenges no like how we can change while we know <laughs> each other and what we can find new while working again like we meet several years with Matias, with Fernando, the DP, with Melanie, like with the, all the team, and we find this new movie. So it's very particular. And we meet after many things that we have been doing separately. And in this case, like I was coming here to meet <laughs> new people, and uh, in that sense, these collisions, no, that we trusted, no, because for some reason, Matty, Dan, Dustin, Keith, like were the one that were coming and we were like looking for this new thing between us that was a new territory to find and in that sense I think it was reflecting a lot what the movie also was trying to explore. So for me it was really jumping into these encounters with people that I have never worked with, that they were talking in another language that, that I have that they were coming for different backgrounds, different styles of acting, or in the case of Dan, <laughs> not acting at all. Um, so 
yes, I think that was very part of it uh, in the work and in the spirit of the work. Does Camila see her father again? Do you imagine that? I guess that's a question for anybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can all give us <laughs> our opinions. I think it's supposed to be completely unknown, and everything about the future is supposed to be unknown, and I think Matthias problematizes the future so much in that last scene that I don't think there can be any answer as to what will happen next. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitive, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I just want to ask Matthias about, earlier you were talking a lot about you know, having the prologue, having all these different acts, and often with a lot of your movies, you have to find, you sort of use that as a, as a structure to play around with, with the placement of sound and space and time. So I was wondering, what was it about this project here that gave you the, um, I don't know, maybe the, the freedom or liberation to experiment as much as you did? Because I think this was like much different from a lot of things you've done in the past. It's an interesting question about Matthias's structures and the very definitive, you know, separations between acts and the breaks, and how with this particular film, he. Uh, allowed himself to experiment more and to maybe achieve a different kind of freedom, I think, is, if I understand you correctly. Um, there was <laughs> uh, I thought that it was going to be my, my uh, thank you, uh, like more, my most simple film. Uh, then I watched it like uh, when I was finishing it in Buenos Aires and I remember calling Melanie, the producer, from Argentina that I used to work in a couple of films. I said, ah, no, it's a little bit strange. Yeah. I thought that it was going to be a very simple film. Uh, but then I saw that, no, I, I have this tendency to do like these detours in a way. Um, so, yeah, it's this thing about trying to explore uh, some fields that I haven't explored before. For instance, the idea of the superimpositions or uh, the idea of like cutting time in that way, coming back and forth. In, in other films, I, I, exp I, I work with cutting the time and mixing it this way or repeating. And here I wanted like something that was uh, smoother and would flow more, even though it would come and, come and go. Um, so I, 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 do f I do have a, a, a need to make narrative that go through an alternative way. Um, <coughs> I don't be, I'm not that systematic, like the, the, for instance, okay, I'm working with translation, so I will work with the idea of the text on the screen. And I, ex and I tried many things. At first I wanted like the, the writings to be written as if it would be like a magic board. And I work a lot around that and I didn't work. And then I thought that doing like something more brute and more like simple was much effective, much, much, much better. Um, and, then, and, I wanted, and then I realized that I can also work with uh, drawings. No, that, that, that those could be also elements that would uh, contaminate the film, but then that it would, it, it would be interesting not to overdo it at the same time. Not like producing a system, but then never like falling fully into it. Um, and then the superimpositions, I, 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 I haven't worked with that, and it's a device that film has, and it, I, it's not that much explored, so I say, okay, or at least in my films I didn't explore it that much, so okay, this, this uh, will and desire to try something different because I tend to go I tend to go close, I tend to go with Shakespeare, I tend to go with the pans, I tend to go to many things, many places, or we're the same, we're the same people. Um, so it's just this desire to try out the many, many things that cinema provides us. So it's just like finding the proper, what is proper for this object that we're creating. No? So the superimposition, for instance, I thought that it worked. It worked for an idea that I had about translation, for instance this idea of impurity, this idea that it's an I a word that is contaminated, an image that is two images. Uh, and I, I, I didn't think that before, it's not like a thesis and so on, but it was something that felt natural and in the end I said, ah, I think that it works here because of this, so I will leave it. And then I think that it will give a rhythm that I haven't explored that much. Um, I don't know if I have like a very clear answer, but it's trying to explore every time. For the filmmakers on stage, I'm wondering what it's like to be in someone else's universe. 
to help someone else bring their, their film to life? Um, no, for me it was a, a, um, a strange echo because I was, like Matthias was saying, in, in Radcliffe writing my, my feature film. And um, I, I, I knew a very, very little about the story. I think you didn't send me a script, only the scene with, um, with you. I, I discovered Matthias' film uh, before coming to the shooting because we, we met each other, but I didn't know your films. And um, no, it was it was extremely, extremely. There was a resonance with what what I was going through, the the residency, the the mix of between work life, being here, and my 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 life in Paris, and and then um, no, it was it was extremely um, refreshing because I was like uh, in Cambridge, stuck in my own. Uh, Labyrinthic uh, writing and uh, and um, I, I, I I I it felt great because working with Matthias was extremely playful and inspiring and 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 in, indeed we, we we found this great uh, and very lovely complicity. It was it was really um, great um, and uh, what. No, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's always extremely, um, extremely surprising to, 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 to be thrown in a, in a film uh, as a director. I, I, I completely forget any, any kind of, uh, of, uh, of marks that I, I completely for, forget that I make films. I'm just there for, yeah. and in, for Matthias' film, it was, it was even, even, um, even even more because uh, you created I mean, you and 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 also because you've been working with this family uh, since a while. Uh, it was just extremely playful and and uh, light. It was a very 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 different energy with uh, uh, in which you are when you are elaborating writing. It was very nice. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't add to that. I mean, you're, it's, it's, that's everything I, I also felt in many ways was just yeah. this playful lightness that, but also I've acted where I didn't, the director, I, I, did, I didn't lose, I, I, I was thinking about the directing too much because the director, I don't know, I just couldn't, I, I don't, sometimes don't enjoy, I don't enjoy the acting when I don't enjoy the directing. And in this case, I did get lost and it's, it's, it's nicer to get lost and to mm -hmm. not, to forget that you're, you also make movies. Yeah, it's better that it way. It was a total pleasure to look in the viewfinder every so often and see a beautiful composition and not to think, oh, I want to do this differently. <laughs> I want to move the camera. But there's certain, there's certain, I mean, I don't, I think, I would imagine all your sets are similar. They're just infectious sweetness and joy and, and a togetherness. There's a, there's a real, real togetherness. There's, there's, there, there's no feeling of separation. Um, the world's between nicest anybody. set. It's really, it's really wonderful. Everybody was so nice. Everybody <laughs> liked everybody. Great set. I think that Fernando Loque, the but, DP, yeah. sorry, uh, when it's very important in all this. Uh, you know, it's a triangle in a way. There's a big bond between the actors and, and Fernando Loque, that is the director of photography and the camera, uh, that, that it's, it's key. You know, the, the sense of family or this connection of this intensity, the idea of they've been taken care of or the complicity. I think that it's not me. It's, a, it's this combination, no? It's, a, it's the way that we, the production works, and then it's how Fernando is and how he's thoughtful and abstract and, and interested in what he's doing, and he becomes like obsessed and he falls into the image and the people in the image and the connection that he makes with each of the actors. It, it's not that, uh, there is that element that is very, very important, but it's a very pity that, it's a very, I feel very, uh, it, it's so sad that he couldn't join us today. He was going to, but then the, it, it, he just finished a film and he went on holidays and he couldn't make it, but he really, really, really wanted to be here because I do think that he, he's a lot. He's more than half of the thing. Um, because, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's even like a sexual thing in how they're looked at and that, that has to do also with him, mm -hmm. no? Uh, 
you know, the movement, how they move, even the sensuality of coming in and out of frame. I don't know. I remember, like in Dustin's scene, that there was a moment that when you when you got this uh, choreography, that you started enjoying, <laughs> that you started like, ah, yeah, it's like this, <laughs> ah, and you started like having fun. Yeah, I, I did feel like a, bo a kid. I felt really great. I'd never done anything like that before, so it was, it was a lot of fun. There are some things that are not in the pictures, but that you had like some crazy turns and so on. Some others are, are in the scene, but, or the hand that comes in, that is very weird, but we enjoy that. And Fernando really liked in that moment when someone said, oh, maybe he can, the, the hand can get in like in a Cocteau film, you know, that comes in like this. And yeah, let's do it. And everybody was happy. Everybody ha was excited, not even happy. Happy is, is another feeling in a way. The excitement no, of, of it. Um, so Fernando has a lot to do here. So, uh, I'm not a filmmaker, so I guess I'm answering the question from okay, 20 yeah. minutes ago about what it's like to be an actor. On this. Um, I think it's like this Q&A a little bit. It's like the way Matisse is talking about it is kind of the way I fell on set, where it's very we know why we're here, we know what we're doing, but also open. Mm -hmm. So the way he's answering it and the way everyone's kind of enjoying each other's company up here uh, is pretty similar to what it was like on set, which is usually I'm on, when I go to Q and A's, the director is kind of talking in a way where they are a little bit more self-important. And I remember the set where the person didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. This Q and A is a little bit more representative, I think, of the shoot, which is it was nice and everyone got along, but it was also very thought through. I don't know. Good. <laughs> Interestingly, a lot of the choreography did not feel natural while we were doing it. I don't know if you had that experience. No, it didn't feel natural, but it, but it felt I mean, so what, right. What, what I mean is that it, Matthias is not like trying to honor the geography of what we were actually doing. He would tell us, oh, just walk that way and then walk this way. He knew how it would look, but it wasn't always geographically right. It wasn't always right in the space. It's a very... A crafted and contrived sense of movement that is designed for the camera. Yeah. I remember seeing Dustin at a bar while we were shooting this, and he was so excited by it, and I was so freaked out by it. <laughs> Why were you freaked out? Because, um, well, one, because I had seen Matthias's movies, and I really liked them, and I really thought the actors were really great. And so suddenly when you are working in, even though he was like changing and adapting, working a different way in New York, in my head it was still this, I knew that Fernando was shooting it, I knew there was gonna be this elegance, and I don't, when I think of myself in my performance or anything like that, I never think of elegant, that's not one of the top words that comes to my head. <laughs> um, and so I think I was just a little bit like, uh, initially maybe like too, um, I don't know, Got so quiet in here all of a sudden. Yeah, um, the air conditioner went off to, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, there was something about it where I just like, I mean, I, I was having a good time. I loved everyone on set, but for some reason, it was uh, more than usual. The kind of choreography of it all uh, made me feel like maybe I was a little clunky. Um, but everyone on set kind of made me feel like, uh, I think also I had the advantage of shooting the part two years ago and and surviving it and actually seeing the footage of it and being like, okay, that's kind of what we're doing. So, I, I mean, if I hadn't had that, I think I would have been a little bit shakier. Even though it was so lovely, there's still a sense of respect for what you're working on where you feel like maybe, you know, you always feel like they could have gotten somebody great. Whereas when you're working on something where you're like, yeah, they, they got me, that makes sense. Focusing on objects and not necessarily on the actors. Interesting. Yes. Um, maybe it's a way of a sort of democracy between like the faces, the, um, the bodies, and the objects, and the walls, uh, you know, like, uh, like balancing that differently. And also, objects help me to develop the plot also, you know, and it's a little bit of a fetish. I, the frame is a device for. Uh, I, I, it's a very complicated word to say, fetishize. <laughs> fetishize? Yes, yeah. elements, no? the postcard, the hand, the yeah. hair, 
the, the I, I like I don't know why I like when the, the, when the knocks of the banisters mm -hmm. no and stop there like deconstructing the usual way things are told also in regard to the alternative ways of telling something that has been told before mm. um, so objects also help me to do that but I like them because they 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 the postcard becomes a ghost you no know, becomes something else it suddenly an object had like many meanings so I think that's rich in order to put into a narrative uh, and then it's interesting to confront it with a face or with a movement with a body going through the park uh, so giving like everything like um, our space not not only the face even though I do work a lot in faces no uh, but I think that the objects help me to develop plot and then in regard to shooting both places, when, when Graham Swan told me, let's do a film here, and we went and we talked with Jake to make it, and we, we, we started making and so on, um, I said that, yes, but with part of my crew here. No, I, I don't think that I will be uh, the filmmaker that I want to be if I'm not with some of the actors that I work with, or with uh, uh, Fernando, or with Ana, no? the production designer. And I like that there's a continuity that I cherish, that I like to cherish. And then I put myself into changing some other elements. But those, I think that I, it's very important to, to, to continue. So, and the same thing with the camera and the lenses, somehow, you know, keeping the same thing, uh, to have like a certain look that it would follow. Then differences will follow by itself. The summer, the, the winter, she's like somehow, I don't know, talking with someone, I don't know exactly where, but there, there's something about, oh, she's alone in New York. She's, uh, I don't know if she's having such a great time in New York. Uh, and that's interesting. I, every time that it cuts to Maria in the track, I really like it, and there's an energy there that comes up, and that it has to do with our energy about making the films there that we know, and it's easier, and I don't know if it's easier, but but it's a flow that we know and that we continue. And here was everything more new, a little bit more uh, in a distance, a little bit uh, more challenging. And that energy, I think that it's there. And I think that it's good to make that contrast. Um, so the real things that happened to us somehow were helpful in order, in order to do the narrative of the film. So. One more, yes. The Chinatown location? Um, by chance, but then by listening to chance. Uh, I remember going to the beach. We went to have a drink with Agostina, that is a friend from Argentina that is living here too, and she's also a filmmaker. Uh, and we went to her rooftop, and when I saw the rooftop, it was this great, like, the... the, the the highland, you said, the, the profile of the city, you know, yeah, the, the Tower of Freedom and so on. And oh, the, skyline. the skyline. Yes. The skyline. And then you had Chinatown, and there was this park that somehow was the same geometry as, as the shot that I did in Princess of France, of a football field. And so I was a little bit curious, oh, we should do a film here because it's silly that it's exactly the same. It's exactly <laughs> the same position, the same thing. And I thought it's funny because I do a film in Buenos Aires and I do a film here and I put those two shots together and then you see the difference between doing a film in Buenos Aires and doing a film in, in, in the US because you compare the same things and you see how they are. Uh, and um, so when, and then we had, I started thinking about a possible film here because we talked with Graham to make a film here and so on. Um, and we shoot, um, we start shooting there. And there was something very nice. That, that first section was shot by Tommy Davis, that is also a filmmaker and a big friend of mine from 2008, that he's also here, and he's, uh, he's where he has a short film in, in the New York program uh, at this festival, too. And I remember that I said, oh, New York, great, the, 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 the city thing. Uh, and, I, I, and I remember uh, we went to see the location again to shoot this thing during the sh film festival two years ago. And I remember that he went first and it was great that he, his physical predisposition to the city was to the other way, mm. to Chinatown. <laughs> and I felt, oh, one of the other challenges, apart from the others, was how to shoot this city that has been so many times shot. And I was falling into the tourist shot. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, uh, t uh, uh, Tommy from Texas and living here for 10 years that somehow showed me best. So again, uh, the cinematographer and the person that your ally shows you better, that, 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 that framing uh, Chinatown that looks like a neighborhood in Buenos Aires more than New York, 
is more interesting, it's more in detail, it's more. And then I follow the geography of that place. I tend, even though I construct this abstraction, I don't, I like to be very, uh, then, you know, I put the, the sign of the Columbus Park, I like to be in the places where I shoot and treat them like realistically in a way. And then I realized by doing that, or, or that, that it was a great place because it was a transitional, it's a transitional space of the city. It, 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 Chinatown is like uh, drifting away and City Hall is coming in, you have the police, you have, it's a very strange uh, area, we, a little bit hybrid in a way, very much taken by the ta Taiwanese community, but, uh, but, but it's an interesting way to get into New York, I think, because it's not the obvious. As, as, as the other side and not the city line, uh, the <laughs> I'm like not remembering that line, the city sky. The sky yeah, skyline, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, was, no, this idea of finding a new little corner of New York that is not, it's not new, but it's not the typical image. And again, it's not constructed only by me, by the chance of Agusti Agustina living there, Tommy helping us to make the, the film, and, and then like trying to approach the space of the, of the, of the, of the film in a realistic way. Oh, and listening to how it moves. We're going to have to wrap it up, but thank you guys. Thank oh, you. Thank it's you such a beautiful film. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.